Coming up on Inside the Summit League, final week of the regular season in basketball. And the top seeds in the league tournament could come down to tiebreakers for both the men and the women. Got a baseball preview coming up. What does North Dakota State have back from last year's league tournament championship team? And what about softball? Omaha is picked to give North Dakota State a run for the league championship. We will see what the Mavs have in the lineup in softball this year. And an update on the Community Arena in Omaha. It will be the new home next season for Maverick basketball and volleyball. Hello, welcome to Inside the Summit League. The Summit League Basketball Championships start on Saturday, March 7th at the new Denny Sanford Premier Center in Sioux Falls. Tickets are going fast. Single ses uh, session passes went on sale this week through Ticketmaster. South Dakota is one of the hot teams on the men's side right now as we hit the final week of the regular season. The Coyotes have won four games in a row, and Tyler Larson is the player of the week for the men. He had 21 points, 13 rebounds in USD's win over IUPUI. South Dakota has made a move up to a tie for third in the standings right now with Oral Roberts and Fort Wayne. South Dakota State and North Dakota State still battling at the top. And here is how it went in the week in men's basketball. Start with South Dakota State slipping into Macomb and slipping away with a two-point win against Western Illinois. Garrett Covington, great for the Leathernecks. 13 of 17 shooting on his way to a season-high 31 points. Did it without even going to the free throw line. But the Jackrabbits put all five starters in double digits. SDSU makes a season-high 13 three-pointers, and the Jacks pull out a 79-77 win. Almost as close in Omaha on Thursday night, Obi Megano with 28 for Go uh, Oral Roberts as the Golden Eagles hang on and win by three. Devin Patterson, 23 points, three assists in another close game for the Mavericks. It's the second three-point loss at home for Omaha. And the Mavs have also had a five-point and a one-point loss at home in Summit League play this season. Talk about close games, North Dakota State. The Bison have only played three league games this year, decided by 10 or more points. NDSU gets a nine-point win at home on Thursday over IUPUI. 16.6 rebounds for A.J. Jacobson. He continues to lead all Summit League freshmen in scoring at just under 12 points a game. Fort Wayne at Denver on Thursday. The Dons win their seventh straight game. Joe Edwards with 17 points as Fort Wayne shoots at 63%. Cam Slam Griffin, eight points and 12 rebounds for Denver in the loss. But the Fort Wayne win train would come to a stop in Fargo on Saturday. Edwards with a season high 20 in this one for the Mastodons. North Dakota State, though, gets 27 from Lawrence Alexander. The Bison run their home winning streak to 24 in a row. And the Fort Wayne win streak ends at 7 in a row. Well, that means South Dakota is tied for the longest win streak in the league right now. USD and IEPOI on Saturday, 21.6 rebounds, 4 assists for Marcellus Barksdale, who had a great week for IEPOI, but 21 points, 13 boards for the league's leading rebounder, Tyler Larson, and the Coyotes get their fourth win in a row. Denver gets a road win on Saturday, holding Western Illinois to its second lowest point total of the season. Cam Griffin with 14 points, 8 rebounds as the Pioneers win this one 59-46. to And South Dakota State completes an unbeaten Summer League season at home. George Marshall with 17 as SDSU runs to a 23-point halftime lead in a blowout of Oral Roberts. The Jackrabbits are now 12-3 in the league, tied with North Dakota State with one game to play. Women's basketball coming up next. Four teams still with a shot to win the regular season, and they all play each other this weekend. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort and Dakota Land Honda. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Health, your Heartland Chevy team dealers, and the Sioux Falls Convention and Visitors Bureau. Welcome back now to women's basketball. IUPUI and Western Illinois are right in the thick of things going into the last two games of the regular season. And these two are two of the reasons why the Jags and the Leathernecks have the co-players of the week. Akilah Sims at IUPUI had a career-high 30 points in a win over Oral Roberts and then added 14 in a win against North Dakota State. She shot 64%, was perfect at the free throw line in those two games. This is the fifth honor of the season and the 11th overall for Ashley Luke at Western Illinois. She averaged 
22 points, 15 rebounds, 5 assists in 2 wins. Luke leads the nation in offensive rebounds so far this season. Those are the words. Here are the pictures as we take a look at these two top performers and the rest of the week in women's basketball. League leader South Dakota at Denver on Wednesday. The two assist leaders in the league going head to head in this game. Paige Bradley, 21 points, eight assists for Denver. Nicole Seacamp, 12 points and eight assists for South Dakota. The Coyotes also get 22 points from Rachel Contreras and they get their fifth road win in league play, 79-68 at Denver. So South Dakota State trying to keep pace with South Dakota and the Jackrabbits get a win at Omaha. Michaela Shaw, 19 points, 10 rebounds for the Mavericks. South Dakota State shoots at just 32% against the Omaha zone defense, but the Jacks get 17 from Megan Watashik and 15 from Macy Miller to pull out a 60-49 win. IUPUI trying to keep pace with SDSU and USD. The Jags and North Dakota State on Thursday. The Bison get 15 points, 15 rebounds from Liz Kina. But the Jaguars shoot at 53%. They get 23 points and 9 rebounds from Shakira Scott. And IUPUI does keep pace with a win at home. Oral Roberts at Western Illinois on Thursday. Big game for Golden Eagle freshman Jordan Gilbert. 24 points in 26 minutes off the bench for Gilbert. And despite another double-double from Ashley Luke, 22 points and 14 rebounds, Oral Roberts earns the big road win, knocking off Western Illinois. The Leathernecks rebound on Saturday, though, taking it to Denver. A season-high 18 points off the bench for Western Illinois freshman Michelle Farrow. 23 points, 16 rebounds, 6 assists for Ashley Luke. Western Illinois leads the entire game. Their biggest lead is 29, and they win it by 19. IUPUI keeping pace again, dominating at home against Oral Roberts on Saturday. 16 points, 11 rebounds for Vicki McIntyre for Oral Roberts. But the Jaguars roll out to a 38-point lead late in the ballgame. They win it by 35. Akila Sims goes off for a season-high 30 points for IUPUI. North Dakota State at Fort Wayne on Saturday. Haley Seibert with 16 points, and the Dons get out to a 14-point lead in the first half. But Brooke Lamar back at her best for the Bison, 23 points, 8 assists. Holly Johnson had 17 points and 9 rebounds, and NDSU beats IPFW by 6. And the league leaders matching up in Brookings on Saturday. 18 points and 7 more assists for Nicole Seacamp for the Coyotes. But SDSU freshman Macy Miller with her first double-double, 16 points and 10 rebounds, and the Jackrabbits get even in the season series with a 10-point win over USD. Up next, swimming and diving. Denver dominates again at the Summit League Championships. Got words from the winners when we come back. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort and Dakota Land Honda. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Health, your Heartland Chevy team dealers, and the Sioux Falls Convention and Visitors Bureau. Well, Denver does it again in the swimming and diving championships that wrapped up on Saturday night in Indianapolis. Uh, the Pioneers repeat as the men's champions rack up 1,099 points. They finish well ahead of IEPUI and South Dakota State. Denver sweeps the postseason awards with the swimming most valuable player, the diving MVP, and the newcomer of the year on the men's side. The Denver women take their second straight title as well. Sam Correa of Denver is the swimming MVP. Grayson Herding of South Dakota, the diving MVP. And here are the coaches and some of the top performers after it was all over. We had a great meet. We we're, exci were excited about it. We were getting ready to rest and race fast. And we wanted to come here and get some kids qualified for NC2As. We did that. We got our first relays qualified ever. Uh, we've got a few kids ranked in the top 20 we're excited about. And, uh, you know, I think we broke eight men's school records and nine women's school records. I think we broke about the same number of conference records. And uh, it's fun to own that. It's fun to celebrate it. And uh, we just want to keep building off of that. This year was a great conference. Um, I can't thank my ladies relays teams enough just because it's the first time Denver's ever gotten a relay to NCAAs and this meet was pivotal in reaching that point so it's been a great meet for both of us for all of us. Yeah we did a really, it's kind of a young team. We got one redshirt senior 
junior who's the leader of both kind of the men and the women. And then I've got a sophomore and a freshman. So they came in ready and raring. They have a lot of good, um, they entertain each other. They've got a lot of good chemistry as a team. Very encouraging and I think that helps the freshmen kind of fit in right away and kind of learn those new dives to be with the sophomore. I think I handled the pressure a little bit better this year. Coming in as a freshman and not knowing what to do or how to dive here was kind of big and this year I think I figured it out a little bit more. Pretty much just did her own thing so I was just really impressed with how well she kept herself together and how well she put her dives down and it was, it was just exciting to watch. Well we go to the Diamonds next. Take a look at baseball at North Dakota State and a season preview of the softball program at Omaha. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort and Dakota Land Honda. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Health, your Heartland Chevy team dealers, and the Sioux Falls Convention and Visitors Bureau. Welcome back to Inside the Summit League. The North Dakota State baseball team finished under 500 in the league last year, but the Bison got on a hot streak, rode it through the Summit League tournament and into the NCAA tournament. And here is the word from Fargo on what the Bison bring back this season. Yannick. The swing and K for the final strike of the ball game. Final out of the game, North Dakota State, the Summit League tournament champions. Finally breaking through, breaking that barrier last year, it was a truly great feeling. North Dakota State is coming off its first Summit League Baseball Championship in school history, an experience that will help the Bison going into the 2015 season. We know what to expect, we're no longer going to be like deer sucking the headlights sort of thing, like we're going to be ready to go, no surprises. A major strength for the Bison this season will be pitching. NDSU is returning four starters that accounted for 20 wins last season. Having a veteran pitching staff is the number one thing you want. Um, because if you pitch well and you play defense well, you're going to be in the game and then it just comes up to getting the hit at the right time. Getting the hit at the right time is what senior captain John Skurbeck did last year in the Summit League title game and believes the Bison have the pieces to make up for losing six seniors. A lot of younger guys are stepping up and uh, filling those spots for those older guys that left. And, you know, they know the way and we're, we're trying to lead them in the right direction. NDSU will get a good test early of how the bats are doing. Of the first six games NDSU will play, three games come against teams that have received votes in the NCBWA's Top 25 poll. We've got a challenging schedule right off the bat, and that was kind of by design by our coaching staff to really challenge ourselves and, and get to where we need to be when we head to Oral Roberts for our first conference game. While the early season schedule may be tough, the addition of the new bubble the baseball team practices in may have helped prepare the Bison. In the BSA, all we could really do was drop down the cages and pitcher throw to a batter, and that's about it. It doesn't have a, a game feel to it whatsoever. You know, and here, set up an infield, take around balls, and it actually feels more legit. Up next for the Bison will be the Snowbird Baseball Classic in Florida on February 27th, where NDSU will play four games in three days. Reporting for Inside the Summit League, I'm Brett Rory. All right, here are your Baseball Players of the Week. Brendan Soat from Fort Wayne. He went four for six in a game against Murray State, had eight RBI and six runs scored, uh, had a couple of home runs, a grand slam in the seventh inning, and a solo shot in the eighth. Anthony Sakara of Oral Roberts went four for four in a game against Southern Illinois. Edwardsville drove in five in that game with a double and a home run. And the Pitcher of the Week is Zach Williamson. Uh, Williamson from Omaha had a combined no-hitter over Chicago State, the right-hander. Uh, threw five hitless innings in the start, allowed just one walk and a season-high five strikeouts. Well, softball season is off and swinging as well in the Summit League. Omaha is considered a contender this year for the league championship. Here is a look at the prospects for the Mavericks this season. You know what? I really believe that our hitting is still our strength right now. Uh, we lost such a powerful bat in that Amber Lutmer, uh, losing 17 home runs. Um, but with that being said, I really think we're stronger all the way through the lineup one through nine. Uh, we have some new kids kind of in the lineup that uh, maybe didn't have as much success last year, but already the first weekend. 
was showing their power. Tanya Peterson, Nicole Warren being new. We still have Lizzie Noble, who had seven home runs, I believe, for us last year. Uh, we do have the power here. I think they've worked very hard on the uh, the offensive side, and um, I think that's going to be one of our strengths. I think the difference in what we've done here with this program and, and uh, you know, these guys have been a part of it, and hopefully, hopefully they can say this as well. But um, I think from day one, even with it was a transition, we never treated it like that. And so people are talking about next year, next year, next year. We were always talking about it in the first year. It's not that we're looking four years ahead, but I think we were working towards being the best that we could in that first year. So the, the situation is they keep talking to me about championship ready in 2016. I don't think for me I would do anything different from what I do every single day. I prepare every single year, every single practice like this is the championship ready season. I do it for Allie being a senior leaving our program. She wants to win every single game. Campbell does too. So I have two people on the side of me that want to win every single day. I want to win every single day. So how we practiced and prepared for the past three years it was like we were ready for regionals. So we're looking more one game at a time, so we're building towards that. But yeah, at all these games right now, um, we have a saying today for May. So we're building towards conference play, and once we get to conference play, again, it's still one game at a time, one team at a time. Um, and when we get to play um, all those top teams and stuff in our conference, uh, we'll put up a good fight and we'll be ready for them. We're really just trying to leave May, have good teams so that they can move on for the to win championship and so making sure that we give all of our confidence and stuff to these younger players who can move on and do good things next year and the years to come and so it's just being that leader and showing them how you and how the program's set and how we do things and so leaving leaving that is a great feeling just knowing that I can't go on and play for a conference tra championship just letting those younger players know that this is how it's done and they can go out and win it next year and I have the utmost confidence in that. All right, Omaha won three games last week, including one against the University of Virginia, but IUPUI has the player and the pitcher of the week after the Jaguars got a doubleheader win over Eastern Illinois and Butler. Well, up next, the Campus Spotlight. We will take a look at what will be Omaha's new venue for basketball and volleyball. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort and Dakota Land Honda. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Health, your Heartland Chevy team dealers, and the Sioux Falls Convention and Visitors Bureau. Well, Omaha's men's basketball team played its last game at Ralston Arena over the weekend. It was a great temporary home for the basketball team, but the Mavs move next season into the Community Arena located just south of the UNO campus. Here is a building update in this week's Campus Spot. It's been a while since we've been here at the project site. We wanted to get an update, see how things were going, and uh, for that, of course, we turned to Steve Gustweiler from Kewick Construction, and uh, Steve, days like today, are a bonus when you have to do this kind of work, aren't they? Oh, they certainly are. Uh, having a break in the weather like this is, uh, is definitely a great thing for us to, to help uh, catch up with all the exterior work. So. One of the things that I've noticed here over the last couple of weeks is with the warmer weather, you guys have been able to do a lot of that roof work that seemed to get postponed when it was really cold. Oh yeah, when you got cold weather and you got windy conditions and everything, it really comes down to safety, whether it's it's safe for the guys to be up on that roof. So we're constantly looking at that every single day. They were working on it when it was uh, cold, but a lot of these days we've had windy weather, uh, which really affects uh, being safe up there on that roof. So mm. uh, having the break in the, in the weather has been great. Now in the early stages of the project, you could drive by, you could see things that are going on. Now that the building is enclosed, it's a little harder to see what's going on, but uh, you're going to give us a peek inside and we can take a look at some of that progress, right? Oh yeah, there's a, it's been a change quite a bit since the last time we've been here. All right, well, let's go take a look. Yep. We're here on the concourse level now, and Steve, what are we looking at here? We've, we've obviously got quite a bit of framing that's already gone into this section of the concourse. Yeah, so this wall right here is actually uh, one of the partition walls, the exterior wall for the club lounge and actually one of the concessions, so there'll be a concession inside that uh, everybody that's in the club can come up and use, and there'll sure. also actually be, once you walk into a door that'll be right here, that'll go into the club lounge. There'll be a, another higher end bar, just to the, uh, further, a little bit further east on the east end, yep. uh, that the club patrons can use, and it'll be 
uh, really nice space for everybody to use. So this is a pretty good view. What about the view from the suites? Is that going to look pretty nice? Uh, the view from the suites is great. There's not a bad seat in the house, I'll tell you that. And where are those suites? The suites are just up one floor. So. All right, well, let's go take a look at those. So Steve, this is the suite level, and what I think is kind of neat is this is going to be a rail, and this will all be open to a lower concourse. Yeah, they're going to have, so you can, they'll have a rail right here, and then this will be all open, to where you can see down to the concourse just below, just below us, and then we have those large windows there to get some natural light in. Wow. And, uh, make it feel a little bit more open in this space. Yeah, that's great. And so here are the suites on this side, and boy, I'll tell you what, the view from, even from here walking in looks pretty impressive. So you're going to be able to have people out in front of their suites as well as in the suite. Yeah, so the, the suites are, are set up to where you can have standing room and then there'll be, there'll be four uh, standing seats. There'll be chairs at the actual uh, drink rail or seating rail. And then in front of that, there'll actually be 12 fixed seats that you can go down and actually sit once again up in front. Well, you know what? As, as we come here more and more each time, you really get a good sense of what it's going to be like to be a fan in this building and from the work that uh, your crews have done here, uh, I think it's going to be a real fan friendly building. Yeah, this is going to be a great facility for everybody involved. I I'm uh, honored and privileged to, to be a part of it. Well, Steve, thanks again for uh, this latest tour and we look forward to catching up with you again sometime down the road. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks to everybody in Omaha. Thanks to all of our member schools. Got the track and field championships, the indoor track and field championships coming up this weekend in Fargo. We'll check it out next week. See you then on Inside the Summit League.